In this video I'll show you how you can create a 2D side scrolling character with Paper 2D in Unreal Engine 5. There are a lot of tips and tricks that I wasn't able to show you in my 2D platformer video, so in this one I'll go into all the best practices and talk about all the small details you need to know. Outside of the basics I'll show you how to align your sprite perfectly with the floor, how you can prevent your character from overhanging on ledges like this, how to turn your character sprite left and right, and how to prevent issues like your character stepping up on platforms that are too high or dropping down ledges instantly. By the way, if you want to learn how to make 2D and 2D 3D hybrid games like these in Unreal Engine 5, you can check out the ultimate Unreal Engine 2D game development course I created through the link in the description. This 12 hour course will teach you all you need to know about Paper 2D and Paper ZD and will create 4 games that teach you about different aspects of making 2D games with Unreal Engine. This course is by far the best way to learn about 2D game creation with Unreal Engine, so make sure to get it from the discount link in the description to rapidly improve your Paper 2D skills. I'll use Unreal Engine 5.1 for this, so if you use 5.0 or earlier, the part regarding the enhanced input system might be slightly different for you. Any version that's higher than 5.1 though should still work the same as I'm showing you here. In this video we won't be making use of the free Paper ZD plugin, however a lot of things I'll talk about still apply to Paper ZD just the same. I encourage you to follow along with this one, since you can use the project as a base for the next two videos in this series, which are about 2D events and using sprite sockets. I'll be using the free generic character asset by Brolov, which you can download from the link in the description. In the case of this character we need to go to PNG, Blue and only use the first sprite sheet. In the next steps we need to import and extract the sprites from the sheet. If you don't know how to do this yet, check out the previous video in the series which goes into detail about this. For this character the cell width and height are both 56. For the purpose of this tutorial we only need the idle, attack and walk flipbook. For all of these flipbooks a frames per second setting of 12 looks about right. Before we get started with the character blueprint let's first create a map for testing. For the basics of the character blueprint it doesn't really matter if you plan on making a 2D or 2D 3D hybrid game, since most things will work the same. Either way, I prefer to just start with the basic 3D map. When making a paper 2D character you could start from a blank blueprint and set everything up yourself, however to make things easier Epic Games provided a paper character class we can use. The paper character has a capsule component and the character movement component which are crucial for making playable characters. It also has a flipbook component we'll use for our character. This component is actually called sprite even though it is a flipbook component, so that can be a bit confusing. Sadly the name is inherited from the parent class so we can't really change it easily. We now want to set our idle animation on the flipbook component. You can see that the sprite looks very small in comparison to the capsule component and this is an issue we need to take care of. One mistake I often see people do is to size the capsule down to fit the sprite size. The problem with this is that the character movement component assumes that your character is of a reasonable height. So a lot of the default settings for crouch height, step height and so on won't make any sense now. Ideally we want to keep the capsule size similar to the default value and make the sprite bigger. A simple way to make the sprite bigger would be to use the scale value on the sprite and this will work out in most cases. However this approach can cause issues with certain editor windows because the sprite will only be bigger in the context of the blueprint, but nowhere else. The best approach is to use the pixel per unit setting on your sprites. And if you want to know about that in more detail you can check out the previous video in this series on importing and using sprite sheets. The next step is to then adjust the capsule and sprite a bit further. You can move up the sprite and make the capsule a bit smaller, however it should be in the same ballpark as the default mannequin. You don't have to get the position of the sprite perfectly right in this step, just make sure it's roughly correct. Since this character is drawn in a chibi style, it would make sense for it to be about 70% of the height of the mannequin. So I think we found the right capsule and sprite size here. A trick I like to use to perfectly line up the sprite with the ground is to just drag the blueprint out into the map. This will make the capsule component snap to the ground. You can then zoom closer to get a better look. When the blueprint is selected you can then select the sprite in the details panel and change the location to perfectly match the floor. You might need to type the value in with your keyboard if dragging doesn't give you the precise value you need. This value is only set on this blueprint instance in the world though, so you need to copy and paste it into your actual blueprint. Now when you delete this blueprint instance and drag in another instance it will align perfectly with the ground. To become able to control our character we need to set up the enhanced input system and an action input for moving. The old input action system has become deprecated with Unreal Engine 5.1 and it's now recommended to use this instead. 
If you're on an earlier version of Unreal Engine 5, things will work slightly different for you. It's a bit hard to wrap your head around the new input system at first, but once you have a decent understanding of it, it's actually gonna save you a lot of time and make things easier. In this video I'll only briefly cover the input system, so if you feel like you need a more in-depth explanation, you can check out my previous video. First create a folder called input. Within it create another folder called actions. Open it up and right click. Go to input and input action. Call it IA underscore move. Open it up and check the value type. There are four different options and they are each used for different situations. In this case we simply want to allow our character to move left and right, so we only need two directions. For this we can use the value type of axis 1D. In case you want to make a character that can also walk up and down or forward and backward, you'd have to select axis 2D. Go back to the input folder and create an input mapping context. Call it IMC underscore side scroller. Open it up. Add a mapping and select IA underscore move. For the input press the D button. Here we don't have to change anything about the modifiers or triggers. Then click the plus button to add another binding. Set the input for the A button. Here we need to add a modifier of negate, since we need to invert the movement direction. Now open up the character blueprint. Just right click and type IA underscore move to bring in our input action. You can drag off from the triggered and use the add movement input node. We want to set the world direction of X to 1.0 to make the character walk forward on a positive value and backward on a negative value. Then connect the action value to the scale value. We also need to initialize the enhanced movement system on this character. Go to begin play. Here we have to get controller and cast it to player controller. Get the enhanced input local player subsystem. Then call add mapping context to it. Don't forget to set the mapping context to IMC underscore side scroller. There are still a few more steps we need to go through before we can control our character though. We'll have to create a blueprint class of type game mode base and call it GM underscore side scroller. Open this up and for the default pawn class select our BP underscore char. Then go to project settings, maps and modes and select our GM underscore side scroller. This will make sure that we're using our custom game mode and are spawning in our custom character. While we're at it, we can also change the default map. Next, we want to add a player start to this map. Drag it up until the bad size label disappears. When we start the game now and press A or D, you can see that we're moving. However, you can't see the character. However, if we press Shift and F1 to get control of our mouse and then press the eject button, we can see that our character actually exists. In the next step, we want to add a camera to the character. Open up the character blueprint. Select the capsule component and click on Add. Look for the spring arm. While the spring arm is selected, add a camera. Now select the spring arm again. We want to change the rotation on the z-axis to be 270 degrees, so we look at the character from the front. When we start the game now, you can see that we have a moving character that is properly shown on screen. You might want to look for the do collision test setting on the spring arm. This will automatically move the camera closer to your character when something is blocking the view. This can be useful, but it's also often the cause of many issues. So for now you can just turn do collision test off and maybe play around with it later if you feel like you need it. The next step will be to switch between the walking and idle animation. 
This is something that will differ greatly depending on if you're using Base Paper 2D or the Paper ZD plugin. Paper ZD provides animation blueprints for this that make it really easy to handle your sprite's animation state and I already made a tutorial about that which you can check out here. In this video however we'll continue using Base Paper 2D since it's really important that you understand these concepts at first. Open up the character blueprint again and look for the tick event. Get a reference to the sprite. Here we can call a set flipbook and select the idle animation. Then just copy paste this and select the walk animation. We'll now have to check for the velocity of the character and determine which animation should be set to active. Right click and get velocity. From this we can get the vector length. And then make it absolute. We don't really care if we're going left or right here. If we don't use absolute we might end up with a negative value. Then we can check for smaller equals zero. And create a branch that is going to pick the idle animation if our velocity is smaller or equal to zero and the walk animation otherwise. And our character can now walk. One issue that can happen is that our character will be bumped off of its lane. Even though we want to make a 2D game, it will fly forward or backwards through physics, explosions or something like that. There is a setting on the character movement component which will allow us to prevent this completely. Open up your character blueprint and click on the character movement component. Look for constraint to plane and set it to active. Then for the plane constraint normal set the y value to 1.0 to only activate the constraint and forcing on the forward backward plane. You can see that the character can now not move forward under any circumstances. One thing you might notice when walking towards the ledge is that the character doesn't nicely fall down but kinda awkwardly hangs off the ledge. This is due to the capsule collider being round on the bottom. On the character movement component there is an option called use flat base for floor checks which helps you prevent this. Thanks to jansenblank9358 in the youtube comments for letting me know about the setting. This will make you fall down naturally just how you'd expect it. Next we want to enable our sprite to turn left or right to match the walking direction. Open up the character blueprint and locate the tick function. Below this we want to create a custom event and call it set char rotation. We then want to call this function on tick to run on every single frame. I actually have a snippet on the Unreal Engine community which you could just copy and paste here if you want to get things done quickly. However I'll also walk you through the steps. Get a reference to the character movement component and get the velocity from it. Split the struct pin. Here we only care about the x velocity since we only move left and right and then use compare float on it. When the value is bigger than 0, we want to look towards the right. Get controller and cast it to player controller. Here we can then call set control rotation. From new rotation we can drag off and make rotator. We don't want to change any of the values here since 0, 0, 0 means we're looking right. We can then just select all of the nodes and press C to create a comment. We can then just copy and paste all of this. Change the comment to say left. And we then need to change the value on the Z, yaw to 180 to point to the opposite direction. When you play the game now, you can see that the character is turning around correctly. However, the camera is also turning together with us. To change this, we need to click on the spring arm, go to the rotation drop down, and set it to world to use absolute rotation. Now your camera should stay at a fixed rotation even if your character turns around. There is one last thing I want to talk about since I've seen a few viewers struggle with this issue. 
This is mostly related to making the character capsule too small like we talked about before. But for some viewers their character just steps up on really big ledges and also snaps down ledges instantly. On the character movement component there is an option called max step height, which is the cause of this. This is set to 45cm by default, so if you have a really small character or world this will lead to issues. You can just play around with this value until your character behaves the way you want it to. I hope this video gave you some insight on best practices when making 2D characters and what settings and options you can tweak to make it behave to your liking. As always, thanks to my patrons who made this tutorial series possible.